You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Hello and welcome to TIFO IRL. I'm Alex, I'm an analyst at TIFO, and today we're going to be talking about Liverpool's new signing, Luis Diaz. John Muller, who writes about stats for The Athletic, said, Forget the Ballon d'Or. The most prestigious thing that can happen to a forward in world football is for the Liverpool stats department to drop everything to decide to sign you. And that's what's happened to Luis Diaz. He's got 14 goals and four assists so far for Porto this season. He also got four goals in the Copa America. And that's one of the places where people really started to take notice. Now, Luis Diaz is in some ways a kind of YouTube footballer, and I will explain what I mean by that, and it's not a pejorative term. This is a guy who is full of tricks, full of nutmegs. According to FB Ref, he's in the top 7% for nutmegs completed in Europe's top five leagues, and he's the kind of guy who can do dazzling little bits of skill that make players look kind of stupid. That's fun, but Liverpool don't buy players for that reason. So let's have a quick look at the board and show the sorts of things that they might be able to expect from him. Now he's a predominantly right-footed uh, left winger, so that's the kind of orthodox position for this inside forward role. What Diaz likes to do is drop off here and square a player up, and that's because his dribbling is really, really good. He's got changes of body position, he can feint, he can go one way, he can go the other. What that means is you get these runs down the outside here where he then jags in field and can pull the ball back, or he takes players on directly here, running this way through this channel, maybe if that centre back's there, or taking these players on in this position. And again, he can then go round like this, I don't know what the arrows are doing here, this is weird, and take it back in towards goal and create shooting opportunities for himself. The other thing that's really clever about Diaz is that because he has this dribbling ability, this defender here is gonna be wary of what he's doing. So he's not gonna to want to commit himself fully to a challenge, get too close to Diaz because he knows that with that change of pace and that technique, Diaz can go round him either way or even worse, nutmeg him. So what they do is they stand off like this. And what that means is if there's a player making a run in here, for example, Diaz can delay and then play a pass like this, or if this player's coming in here, these arrows are all over the place, he can play a pass in there. And what that means is that Diaz can, at times, open up positions for other players to run in, even without taking players on and dribbling, as we know he likes to do. Now, there are a couple of things that are worth noting about him. He's very, very fast. He's actually been clocked in the Champions League as faster than any of the rest of Liverpool's front three. He's good in the air, he's five foot 11, and he wins more aerial duels currently than Mane or Salah. So that's a useful thing when Liverpool like to play these long passes out here. Diaz is probably a better receiving option in that sort of space than the other options that they have currently. There are a couple of weaknesses to his game. Currently, based on Porto's system under Sergio Conceição, he's not expected to do a great deal of pressing or defensive work, but he does show real off-the-ball intelligence, and that means that he is likely to be able to press quite well. I think also he needs to work on his first-time finishes. What he does a lot of the time when he's moving towards goal is you can see him kind of working out his angles. It's not exactly rehearsed, there is still an instinctive element to it, but he's looking to drive towards and then create that space for himself. What you don't see is the kind of Diogo Jota thing where he's in this area already and looking to snap finishes in first time or maybe win headers. Now that is something that he may be able to work on. As I said, he's an orthodox left winger. We haven't really seen him as a, as a sort of shadow striker in the Firmino role or playing off the right-hand side. But what's really interesting here is that Liverpool, by adding him, have done something that they also did with Diogo Jota, which is to broaden their attacking options. We're used to Liverpool playing in a certain kind of way with a certain kind of front three, and they've done that with Mane and Firmino and Salah really well and really consistently but they're adding to their portfolio now. They've got somebody who's a better ball carrier, who's better in the air, who's really good at taking players on and opening up space and playing between the lines, but who plays on the left-hand side. And that means that Jurgen Klopp has now got a portfolio of five striking options that he can use to unlock opposition defenses. It's gonna be a really, really exciting time for Liverpool once we start seeing Luis Diaz come in and play, and he promises nutmegs. 
So that's been Tifo IRL. Thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed that look at Luis Diaz. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we will be back with lots more content very soon. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.